Bonjour, hello, who is that? Tumela, Legai, Salibonani, Linjani, Magadi, Mulishani, Mulibwanji, Habari. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are tuned in from, thank you for joining me. This is Get to Know Them. These are Ego Wings facilitators. And we get to dive into their lives, to get to know who they are what they are all about, what it is they do outside being amazing speakers and just in their own professions. My name is Candy and I'm your host. So in case you have missed the three episodes that I had, I was joined by amazing, incredible people. So please go to the social media sites and have a look at who they are outside their everyday lives. Today, though, I am in jo I'm, I'm joined by an amazing, amazing, incredible woman. She is a voiceover artist, a storyteller, an MC, and she is so passionate about the youth. She's got a program that looks at inspiring them, developing them. And of course, these have got to be in the age group of 13 to 19. She is phenomenal, full of energy, and I'm sure you have seen her on so many platforms. And once or twice, you have heard her voice, and maybe you didn't even know that it was her. So today, I am honored to be joined by a phenomenal, incredible woman. Her name is Nomalanga Sitole. So everyone, thank you for joining me. Allow me now to introduce you to this incredible person. Nomalanga, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? How have you been? <laughs> thank you, Candy. It's absolutely an honor. Can I do a different introduction? And this is how we do it the African way. When I get on yes. stages, I'm, I say, Gingu Nomalanga, Intombe Balamalanga, Ucho Bekamachana, Umondise. And so you're probably thinking, huh? So many names. So Nomalanga is what I was named. Sitole is my surname. My grandfather says the girl that counted her days. So before I was born, my mother traveled from one African country to another. I was born within two weeks and my grandfather was like, she counted her days. And so the rest is just my totems of my surname. Candy, I'm well. Yes. Oh, this you? is what I have missed. It is brilliant <laughs> to see you. I mean, both you and I are in South Africa. And I always say to people yes. that you and I can write a story about lockdown and what oh, we went yeah. through. So to see oh. each other today is just a blessing. So it like is, I absolutely. said... People know you. People have seen you on so many different <laughs> platforms. People have even come to you just in your own profession, whichever it is mm. at the particular time, and depending on the heart that they want you on. So today we are not talking about what you do on stage or what you do mm. in your own professional space. We want to get to know who you are. So please tell us, who is Noma? Who is Noma <laughs> Langa? Yeah, that's always not a very easy question, but uh, Nomalanga first and foremost is a child of God. Um, Nomalanga just loves people. I love being around people. I just love giving off my energy because, you know, we are spirit beings, so we connect via energies. Nomalanga loves traveling. Give me a budget. I, I will get into a car. I love long distance driving family, by the way. So if you ever need a driver, hey, I'm here. <laughs> I am very much an open book, really um, emotional when I need to be. I learned at a young age that tears are good. Um, I love dancing. Uh, at the age of five, my grandmother and I used to go to weddings. And, you know, in, in African weddings, you know, there's a open the stage type of situation. Who's going to open the stage? Ah, me, I was that girl. <laughs> I was a chubby little child, always been chubby. And I would just get onto the stage for, you know, just because I liked it, you know. And then they would, you know, um, throw coins, whether it's at the city hall or wherever. So this is who I am. Give me good music. Uh, I'm not afraid to be around people. But I've also got a shy side to me. So people always think, ha, this loud person, how do you be shy? But it just depends on the environment. Um, and this is Nomalang. I'm an only child between my mom and my dad. And then I've got three younger siblings from my mom's marriage. 
Ha, oh, what else, Candy? This is who Nomalanga is. I'm just a ball of fun and energy. People that know me always say to me, but like, where do you get this energy? And I'm like, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> I just love, I have a heart for people. I always say to people, I'm a people's person. That's just how God created and wired me. I love that. And so true. Though I am shocked, which part of Nomalanga is shy? Which part of you... When do you get shy? Please educate You've me never and seen the listeners me. here. <laughs> You've never seen me in my shy stage, but what happens when I walk into an environment um, and sometimes when I just don't know people, I'm always, I'm an energies person. I'm drawn to people. I'm drawn to energies. And sometimes when I'm just either maybe not settled or I'm just just trying to get into the space, I'll be very quiet. When I've done events, mostly you, you are spent, you, you're being, you're everything, you're exhausted. And then you're supposed to hang around, network. I, I will do it for as much as I can. But at that point, I'm gone. So the shy side, you probably won't realize it, but I know it. And people that know me very well will be like, yeah, no, she kind of, I'm a loner, Candy. Um, I've always been like that. Um, I guess in my growing up, I've always been the eldest, always fending for myself. So I guess that's where that also comes in. But yeah, you, you would never pick it up. <laughs> you know what? You're so right. And, and you, you, ooh, you hide it very well, very well. Yeah. Trust me, if you hadn't said that, I wasn't going to know this part about you. But thank you for yeah. letting us know. My second uh -huh. question for you is, what does Nalanga like? Your candy. Good music, dancing, traveling, food. Uh, I'm supposed to be vegetarian, by the way. However, we are working on that journey. <laughs> I grew up, listen, Candy, I grew up, my grandmother, my, I was raised by my grandparents. At home, we had chickens that uh, layers that laid eggs. We had the broilers, the meat ones. We had every vegetable and tree under the sun. My grandmother is from KZN, um, the one who raised me. Both my grandmothers, in fact, are from KZN. And she cooked, she cooked, she baked, she did everything. Candy, I'd sit, you know, when you make cake and you sit in the bowl there and you're like, yes, that's me. And so slowly I'm getting back into that. I just love good food. I'm a seafood person. Reading, depending on what the read is, um, I always say to people, my attention span, well, is not always the greatest, especially if something is not exciting um, to me. Um, and I always joke and I say, you know, patience is definitely not my second name. When patience was handed out, I, I was like, wait, I'm coming. <laughs> But yeah, I love traveling. Um, as I mentioned earlier, give me a car, uh, fill it up. I'm really not picky, manual, automatic. I like changing gears. So if you give me a seven speed, eight speed, I can feel it. You know, when you change other gears, I'm like, yeah, no, we're doing the things. Um, I'll do, I'll say a scary thing. Uh, we did a, a trip to Cape Town. Cape Town trips are long, could be 14 or so hours. Our return trip, we bagged it in 12 hours, 15 minutes. And everyone was like, do you want to kill yourself? I'm like, the, the car was, was rumoring. It was agreeing. The people were in the car. They were all asleep. And so that's just me. I, I love outdoors. Put me anywhere where there's water. Put me anywhere where there's water. Uh, we were taught to swim at primary school. So I love water. Um, anything that just is a waterfall. I want to bungee jump. Uh, but I was told maybe you're back this this so I'm still kind of debating with it I was ready to do it 2018 and then I canceled last minute so I'm that kind of person let's just do the crazy stuff oh yes I want to egg glide okay uh, that so look can do that look <laughs> says, a <laughs> says a mouthful so I want to bungee jump I want to glide uh, I want to do zipline. I've done zipline and low airing, you know, it, it's a scary thing, but I think the adrenaline, I'm an adrenaline person. Okay. Sorry so, about that. So yeah. for me, um, there, there, there are three questions I want to ask at the same time. So let me try and see <laughs> if I can, you know, bring it down a notch and then ask yeah. each one, uh, you know, at a time. So you say that you are a person yes. that uh, loves to eat. 
My goodness, yes. Mama Langa, you, <laughs> people who don't know you or the ones that know you, 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 you uh-huh. know, you seem like a person who's literally a vegetarian. So now when you say <laughs> you are trying to be a vegetarian, please, could you explain that to us? I mean, you've got an amazing body. You don't seem like a person who enjoys food like the rest of us. So how is the vegetarian line <laughs> trying and, and where does the food go really? Okay, so I grew up as a very chubby baby, very, very chubby. Um, And I think at the age of seven or nine, somehow I just literally lost it, lost all the weight. I can't tell you what happened. And yeah, let me just tell you, a vegetarian came about a couple of years ago. I started craving spinach, peanut butter, all those beetroot, all those strange things. I'm like, Okay, God, what's going on here? And I'd gone through a process of, of losing weight. So in 20, sure, 2009, um, I got very ill, endometriosis. And I literally, and I remember I had just signed up with Weight Watchers. <clears throat> and uh, I went to my first session. I was weighing 67 kilograms, 67.2 for luck, yeah. Literally within a month, I had gone all the way down to 59. So endometriosis was horrid. I couldn't eat. I was just, I, I was, a, you know, and, and I just found that I was more comfortable at that, at that um, kilograms or weight. And so in 2014, a friend of mine just was like, no, let's just go to gym. Let's just make this fun. And so it was like buddy, buddy. I'm not a buddy, buddy gym person, but I just thought, I, why not? It's here. Let's do it. And so I lost quite a bit of weight. And um, I realized then I was at my healthiest. My gut was happy. So I've always had um, challenges with my gut. I, uh, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And they couldn't find anything. I did gastro, whatever, the, those things um, that they, you know. And they couldn't find anything. So when it started that I craved all these vegetables, I thought, okay, something must be. And then I think at that time, there was a big hype around eating for your blood group types. I went to the doctor and funny enough, every time I did a blood test, they took my, you know, results, wrote down my blood group type, but it was just like, yeah, whatever, you know? Um, And so I realized actually blood group type A is skewed towards vegetarian. And when I eat according to that candy, I'm at my healthiest. My gut is happy. My body is happy. Um, And the reason I say I'm trying is because it's not always easy. I love bread. I love meat. I grew up as a meatitarian. So now I need to cut down to just chicken, turkey, so you know, certain types of fish. I can't eat all types of fish. And so, yeah, that, that's where the vegetarian part comes in, quite honestly, um, yeah, we're, we're getting there slowly but surely. I, I can't stand the taste of soya. It's horrid. Soya milk. Almond milk is not so bad. So I've even bought blackstrap molasses because I need to get rid of sugar. But yeah, that's the journey of a vegetarian. You know, I think I, I, I'm loving what you're saying. I think it's about one being very comfortable um, in, in their mm. space, in their body. Mm. And also mm. it's about being healthy, especially in this time that we are in. It's about being mm-hmm. healthy. So um, for me going forward now, my next mm-hmm. question is, when did you know that speaking mm-hmm. was what you wanted to do? When did you get that aha moment? When, when did that resonate with you to say, this is actually me? Can I actually stand up for that? Yes, yes, please. So my uncle always used to say to me, and I get very excited about this question. My uncle always used to say to me, hey, Miss Know It All. It hurt, but I was a jabber mouth as a a kid. Under seven, I knew everything about everything. I had an opinion about everything. And I remember when my uncle said, hey, when are you such a nye, 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 And I thought, okay. But I didn't, I honestly didn't, I was a child. You know, when you're a child, I always say to people, what would your five-year-old self say of the woman you've become or the man you've become, right? We are free-spirited at that age. We, there's no inhibitions. You don't care what you're saying. You, you're being your real, raw self, right? And so that was just a journey of my life. My mother told, always tells me the story that when we visited 
my grandmother, with, this is her mom, um, we would go to the shops and would come back with lots of chocolates. This is me being a kid and all the other kids. And they'll be like, where do you get this? Hi, Nomalanga just got there and spoke her English and we got free stuff. Huh? Sorry, what? So I guess I've just been naturally a gifted speaking person. My mom is very on the quiet side. So maybe that's where the shyness comes. And my dad is a jabber mouth. If I phone him, my airtime will get finished because I don't get in a word. <laughs> but anyway, um, at the age of 18, I left school in December. A-levels done, dusted. In February, there was a program called Teen Scene, um, which was hosted in Montrose Studios in Blaio. They were looking for a um, co-presenter for the gentleman that was there. Can I just tell you, we did the interview on um, in the studio rather, or on my studio, as we would say. And um, two of us were chosen, two girls were chosen. Um, the other one didn't pitch. And that's how I got the job. And I've been speaking since but the penny really didn't drop um, until I started working in corporate and it was just easy for me to welcome people events and and it it's just such a natural gifting that I absolutely did not realize what God had given me as a gift um, and as life carried on you know corporates would even in the work that I did when I was in the banking industry they would say norms please MC we don't have budget but we'll give you an any 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 and I'm like okay but because it comes naturally I don't have to think about it um, just give me a brief what do you want me to say and I'm very one of those impromptu speakers um, I watch the space I watch the surrounding um, I, I just I feed off energies as I've said to you and I guess when I eventually left corporate in 2015, at some point, I think in the five years prior to that, I started getting uncomfortable. Every time my spirit starts getting agitated, uncomfortable, I realize it's time for change. But it had to be at the right time. And um, honestly, it was a God conversation. I'd gotten a new job. I was supposed to be going for assessments. And God was like, my darling, uh, this is the end of corporate next year come January, so this was December 2014, you're going out. And that was it. Um, that was it. And I think it's only as I started my entrepreneurship journey, I realized the whole teenage thing had already been inbuilt in me. So when I was given the opportunity to host this TV program for four years, literally God was preparing me. That's only when the penny dropped as entrepreneurship kicked in. I must say maybe 2017, 2018. I was like, okay, this can be a real business. And that's how I left corporate. I love your stories. And it does make sense <laughs> that you are a storyteller. Um, wow. I'm, I'm loving just listening to you share how you got to where you are today. My next one for you is you have <laughs> signed um, a partnership with uh, Eagle Wings Consultancy. Why? Yes. Why did you feel that it was important for you to sign that partnership? Andy, you and I have been friends um, for a minute. Uh, one thing that drew me was because besides the same faith that we share, your energy, your vision, your African vision, uh, especially for teenagers, I always say we're building Africa one, one young person at a time. And so when you said, Norm, this is what I want you to do. And, and, and what I have over the years um, would like to say, have, I've become comfortable about the fact that my calling and my purpose is for young people. And if I never live according to that, I, I would not have fulfilled the reason why I'm here. And so your energy, your passion, your norms, we're going, we're going into the globe, we're going into Africa. And my dream has always been to work, live in all 54 countries in Africa and African continent. Let's tell the world our story. Let's tell Africa first and foremost, our own story. And uh, let's just... Hey, fam, let's not hide behind anything. You know, everyone's story, uh, um, as you would have seen in one of my quotes, is a nugget of someone's story may propel somebody else to live out their destiny and their purpose. And so for me, Eagle Wings Consultancy just embodies all of that. You, you are a free spirit. The other facilitators that are on there, some I know, I know their free spiritedness and uh, please, can we just go and tell stories? We, we can only change our own continent and the world by really opening up with storytelling. 
I love that, Noma. I really love that. <laughs> I mean, you know, there is something about being an African. There is something about Absolutely. born on whatever country of this continent. We are a people that are so sociable, like any other race or any yes. other continent. Yes. But there is something yeah. about Africa, you know, we have it all here. And you're so right. It is time for Africa to do Africa. And I'm loving just your passion and your growth. And you <laughs> are starting with the right age group. But yeah. the one thing that I, I would want our listeners to sort of um, hear you share is from the time you and I have started this conversation, you have talked so powerfully about your faith. And without realizing it, you've actually, um, you know, you've actually cited uh, verses from the Bible without giving us the actual verse. So for the sake of wow. our listeners, I would like you to just share with us, how has your faith, and I will mm -hmm. let you say who and, and what your religion is, I will not put it out there, Please. I want people to hear it from you, how your faith mm. has helped you and your loved ones during the hard time that we started with COVID in 2020. How has that been for you? Sure, Candy, what a, what a journey. Um, my faith is Christianity. I grew up Methodist at home. Um, my granddad was a um, music director. So it's, it's no uh, coincidence I've ended up in the music ministry in the current church I'm in. But my faith kept me grounded. You, I remember saying to you in June, Candy, I'm done. But my faith kept me going. It, it's been probably the toughest season for most of us. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since uh, March 2015. So, I mean, it's six years now in 2021. Had it not been for my faith, you, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And so my faith has kept me grounded in COVID. And, and we say, whatever your belief system is, that is what will keep you grounded. You need to have a foundation. And that foundation is the one that will carry you through. And without even realizing it, um, you know, a lot of us believe in whatever we believe in, but that's what keeps you going. You know, uh, if that had to be stripped from you, whether it's Buddhism, whatever, you know, you will feel empty. And, and that's just what kept me going. Had I not had my Christian faith, having you around me and other like-minded people, I know it would have been a mess. I, I don't know if you'd be talking to Noma Langa right now, but um, that's kept me going. I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the scriptures. I'm thankful for gospel music. I'm absolutely just grateful for my faith. And, and that's what I want to say to people out there. Whatever it is you believe in, that is what will ground you. That is what gives you your value system. Um, that is part of your DNA. And if you ever let go of that, trust me, you will feel some sort of emptiness. You know, it, faith is not an easy journey either. There are times you look at your faith and you think, oh, but why am I believing in this so-called being that I've never seen? Of? You know what I'm saying? So you go through those challenges. You do. But for me, the word of God kept me sane. Powerful, Nomalanga. Powerful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing so openly. I appreciate that. Only a pleasure. So um, my next question for you is, if you had to um, see the younger <laughs> Nomalanga at 16. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You, you <laughs> just, one day, you just closed your eyes and Nomalanga at 16 is standing right in front of you. What is the one thing mm. you would tell her that she should not forget when she gets to oh. today with COVID and everything, what would that one thing be? Can you, that's a difficult one at 16. Hmm. Just be you, be authentic, be you. Don't try and be anybody else because, you know, then we didn't have social media. Thank God for that. Whew, it would have been a nightmare. <laughs> But I think at that point in time, I was probably at my most, most genuine worst, if ever there was a word, you know, most genuine worst. But as a 16-year-old, you are more focused on passing your O-levels. You are more, for me, because I was a mother at the age of 18, not to my own children, but um, I had to look after two of my, of all the three siblings, because my mother then got a job in another African country. And so at the age of 13, my, my focus was 
family. It was just, are my brothers good? Have we gone to school? Um, has the family eaten? <sighs> it's good to be real, Candice. I hope you don't mind me shedding no, tears. Please. But the 16 year old was focused on just making sure everything was okay in the family. And I would say to her, just enjoy life. Um, there is no perfection in human beings. Just be you, man. Do not try to be anything else other than what you were created to be. And so, yeah, that's, that would be my advice because we grow up and then I want to be like Candy. I want to be like so-and-so. And, and that's not you. This is not who you've been created to be. Just allow the process to be. So, yeah. This Perfect. is so bad, Candy. Can I? Uh, I'm all just. <laughs> <laughs> this is and what you it's all like, about. You should, have, you should have warned me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh. This is what it's all about. And thank you so much for oh. being so open and honest and, and real with us. And oh. no, man, this is who you are. You're so authentic. And I guess this is why God has impressed the passion that you have for teenagers, ages 13 mm. to 19. You are so Absolutely. real and that's why you draw them to you. You draw <laughs> these 13 and 19 years, uh, you know, people around you because you don't lie. You, you, you tell it as mm. is, you are real. And like you said earlier, you're one person who believes in being real with your emotions, being honest. Yeah. If you're feeling yay, yeah. let's be yay about it. If you're not feeling good, <laughs> we're not good about it. So. Thank you so much for being vulnerable and you're helping all our listeners and viewers today. And um, really candy. Closing, <laughs> yes. And in closing, oh um, you know, they do yes. say when you're having an amazing time um, with someone in conversation, whatever it is that you're doing, time just mm. suits pie. And, and, and I don't understand Absolutely. where time has gone, but you know, we've got parents who are tuned in. We've got, um, you know, people that are looking after, like yourselves. We've got the same age group, like, um, you know, the ones that you you are so passionate about between the ages of 13 mm. and 19. So please, could you give our listeners, our viewers who are listening in now and those who listen in later when we post this on our media sites, what your advice is, especially to the to the age group that you're focused on, mm. on how they should navigate life. You know, I don't mm. know why we all say post-COVID. I don't see COVID no. going anywhere. It is here to stay. For me, COVID is the next malaria. It is the next yellow fever. It is, um. it, we just need to learn how to navigate it, you know, on mm. a day-to-day -day life. So what is your advice to the age group 13 to 19, for everybody who's listening in. So be unapologetic about your story. If there's one thing I just want to, you know, as young people, you always want to compare yourself with someone else in class, someone else next door. And, and, and trust me, we all have a different journey. We all have a different lane that we're running in. If you go into a sports stadiums where they do marathons, you know, it, there's lanes, there's a reason for lanes, right? So never, ever feel the pressure to follow the lane of another person, because in doing so, there may be just one person that God has given you um, and, and you don't know it, but they're looking at you. They're watching your every step and you're encouraging them. Sometimes you may never even know this person, you know, um, young people these days, Generation Z, as we call them, they always want to do good. So as a young person, if you've been given an idea, please run with it. If you have been given something to just, just tell the world, don't be afraid. As I said to Candy earlier, we will build Africa one young person at a time. You just could be that young person. And please, young people, social media is the most amazing thing. However, not every social media post is a, is a true reflection of what is going on. You probably know now people are depressed. COVID is real, fam. And so as a young person, if you're struggling with stuff, 
talk to somebody. And so it, it may not be your parents. Everyone is hustling right now. Parents are just trying to make sure we as young people are sorted. You know, this is one thing I'm just going to say. And I know, Candy, you asked for one thing. But for me, it's just be... Be unapologetic of who you are. Be unapologetic of your story, how you were raised, who you were raised with. There is a reason for that. Never go back and say, yeah, but my upbringing was this and that and that. You have every opportunity that God will provide for you. And this is regardless of whatever faith you believe in. Some people believe in universe, all of that. There will be doors that will be open for you run into those doors don't just run into them because seasons change you don't know how long that door is open for and be bold be authentic be bold be unapologetic be you no single person has the same thumbprint as the next person and until you embody that young people until you embody that you are not candy, you're not Nomalanga, you're not your parents, you're not your twin sister or twin brother. Even twins have differentiators. Please go out and live your life. There may just be one person that's looking out that you need to be authentic to. And with that, I say, I love you. Be authentic, be bold, be you. Wow. Now that's how you close a chat. I don't even know what else to say. Um, episode four, my goodness. Thank you so much, Nomalanga, for making the time. I know you are so hectic. I mean, you have so many um, you know, sessions out there waiting for, for you, but oh my goodness, thank you for being authentic. Thank you for being real. Thank you for being so open with us and just sharing um, you know, your life with us. Thank you for opening that door and letting us see who you are. So Nomalanga, thank you very much for being an amazing, amazing guest. Thank you very much, Candy. Thank you for allowing me just to be vulnerable. I think in the time of COVID, people just need to allow themselves to be vulnerable. It's pointless hiding, it's pointless. And I guess the reason for the cry, but I was like, okay, cut, can we go again? However, if we never share our emotions, if we never share our tears, my biology teacher said this, when you are feeling all emotional or just going to a shower or a bath, just go underwater, let the tears out. You know what it does? It cleans you, it cleanses you. And after that, trust me, you'll have a new perspective. So mwah, love you lots. And uh, thank you, Candy, for this opportunity just to be with you and just share with your viewers. Uh, yes, I'm a crier. I was first in line for tears and I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> and there you have it. That's who she <laughs> is. That is who she is. So to all of you that are watching now, um, I'm sure you have had an amazing time like me. And if you need more help, like I said, Nomalanga's passion is uh, the youth, teenagers from the ages of 13 to 19. She is real. She's unapologetic. She is full of life. If you want to laugh, cry, share, hug, <laughs> do it all. This is the person yeah. that you need. To get more information about Nomalanga, please visit www.ewconsults.com for more information as well. Um, you can write to info at ewconsults.com. Now that's how we do this series. This series allows you to dive into the lives of these amazing facilitators. These are people that give. These are people that bless. These are people that are ready to impact, to give us the opportunity to be better, to give us the opportunities to know that it is okay to be vulnerable, authentic, and real. So until next week, when I bring in somebody else, do join me then. So wherever you are, have a lovely morning, have a fantastic afternoon and enjoy your life. To quote Nomalanga, live boldly, walk into that door and have an amazing, amazing day. Thank you.